So, you've done your filming, you've brought your footage into your computer, and now you're ready to start editing. Here's the question. Where do you start? Well, today we're gonna go through my personal step-by-step post-production workflow for YouTube, and along the way, I'm gonna give you some tips to help you make better videos. Let's go. All right, so where do you start? What do you do first? Or what do I do first, I guess, is the better question to ask. The first thing that I do after I film a video is I review all of the footage. Because let me tell you, there is nothing worse than getting into an edit, going to snag a piece of footage that you need in your video, and you find out that that clip is completely missing or the file is corrupted. Trust me, review your footage first then go and reshoot anything you need to reshoot. It will save you a ton of time and a ton of frustration in the long run. Once you're done reviewing your footage, now it's time to organize it. In fact, you could actually organize as you review and that would probably skip us. I'm gonna try that next time. Organizing your footage will help you find things quickly when you're in the middle of an edit. It's a very, very important step of the process. Please, for the love of God, do not skip this. Now, there's a ton of ways to organize your footage and I get questions about it all the time. So I'm gonna tell you the same thing that I tell everybody else. Organize in a way that makes sense for your brain and your project. For a simple YouTube video, I organize my footage pretty, well, pretty simply. I've got an A-roll folder, a B-roll folder, I've got a VFX folder, and I've got an audio folder. And that's about it. Now, if I happen to shoot with multiple cameras during the video, then inside of my top level folders, I will have some subfolders. So in A-Roll, I might have a folder for the Pocket 6K, the DJI Pocket 2, and the Canon SL2. Same thing for your B-Roll. And then I'll also add in any sponsor assets. So any footage that I'm gonna need for a sponsored segment, or maybe some screen recordings if I'm doing a tutorial. The VFX folder is typically separated by effect. So I'll have a folder for energy burn, for fire, for fog, whatever I happen to be using in that particular video. And then the audio folder will be separated by sound effects and music and Foley and diegetic sound. Now for my really big projects, I will actually separate everything by scene. So my top level folders will be scene one, scene two, scene three, scene four, you get the idea. And then inside each scene folder, I will have A-roll, B-roll, audio, visual effects, and so on and so forth. I do this for YouTube videos as well, where I have some sort of skit or something that I'm using as an example in the video. I will have a top level folder for the skit and then a top level folder for the actual breakdown or tutorial or whatever I'm making. Again, this is just the way that I organize my footage. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. Play around with it, see what works for you. Again, there's no wrong answers, but I do have one pro tip rename your files so they're easy to find when you're in the middle of your edit. So we've reviewed our footage, everything looks good. We've organized our footage so it's gonna be easy to find. Now it's time to set up our project. Now the top level stuff is pretty simple. You set your project for the resolution and frame rate that you want your final video to be, simple. Also, you might wanna change some of the other parameters. For instance, in DaVinci Resolve, I can set my target loudness level so that when I'm editing audio, I can normalize for YouTube. And another Another pro tip, if you've got settings that you reuse over and over and over again in multiple projects and your editing software has the capability to save templates or presets or something like that, make sure you take advantage of that feature and do that because it will save you a ton of time in the long run. And now that our project is set up, let's set up our first timeline. Now this is usually pretty simple. You start a new timeline or sequence, depending on what software you're using. You make sure that all your settings are what you need and you're good to go let's set up our tracks. Now, I personally like having two tracks for everything. So for my video tracks, I will have two A-roll tracks, two B-roll tracks, two tracks for adjustment clips, two tracks for titles, and two tracks for visual effects. Yes, that is 10 video tracks in every project. No, I don't always use them all, but it's good to have them there just in case I need them. I can always delete empty tracks later on in the editing process. Now, my audio track setup is kind of the same. I've got two mono tracks for 
dialogue. I've got two stereo tracks for sound effects, two stereo tracks for Foley, two stereo tracks for ambient noise or diegetic sound. And that's about it. Oh, two tracks for music. Can't forget the music. Now keep in mind, this is for a basic YouTube video where it's just me sitting here in my studio using the same mic in the same scenario the whole time. If I have multiple people, multiple microphones, multiple locations, then I'm gonna have two tracks for each one of those people in each one of those locations using each one of those mics. So we can end up with a lot of dialogue tracks, but trust me, when you get to editing audio, you'll be glad you have it. And real quick, if you're wondering why I have two dialogue tracks for everything, it's because I like doing J and L cuts. I want the option to overlap my audio and having two tracks there in the beginning allows me to do that with relative E. Now we've spent a lot of time setting up our project and we haven't even brought our footage in. And I'm sure there's a lot of people watching this video who are wondering why that is. And all I have to say is this. After working on a whole bunch of projects for my YouTube channel and for clients, I have found that the more setup and the more preparation I do in the beginning, the smoother the editing process is gonna be and the less likely it is that I'm going to get lost. So I set up everything in the beginning so I don't have to think about it later and we're good to go. That being said, if you think this is total overkill, go ahead, dive in head first without setting everything up, see what you can do. I don't judge. The next step in our editing process is to finally bring our footage into our NLE. Thank God, we're finally there. Now, hopefully your editing software or your NLE will allow you to just bring in the folders that you created on your computer into your NLE and just have it as kind of a bin structure. If so, that's all you gotta do and you're done, just drag and drop. I know DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro lets you do this. I'm not sure about other editing software. Although I think Final Cut just kind of connects with the footage on your computer without you actually having to drag anything in. And if that's the case, 10 points to Gryffindor. Either way, if you can't drag your folders in and just have those be your bins and your file structure inside of your NLE, then you'll have to create folders inside of your editing software, try and set them up the same way you have them set up on your computer, and then drag your footage into those bins or those folders. And once all my footage is in my NLE and it's all organized and it's all labeled and I've got my timeline set up and ready to go, it's finally time to start editing. The first step is to assemble your timeline. Now I do this in a very specific order and I know there's a lot of people out there who know a lot more than me who do things very differently. This is just what works for me. I edit everything scene by scene or in the case of YouTube videos, chapter by chapter. When I do that, when I break everything up into different sections, I can give each section the attention it deserves and I won't get burned out by the end of the video. Now for each chapter, I do things in a very specific order. Let's start with a roll. I do three packs passes with the A-roll. On the first pass, I bring all of the A-roll into the timeline for that first scene and I cut it up so each statement has its own clip. And then I go through and I start trying to figure out what I'm going to be taking out because I tend to overshoot and I tend to not need everything that is sitting there in the timeline at first. If you wanna know how I make those decisions, it's pretty easy. I take a clip out, I butt it up together and if the two clips on either side of the one that I took out make sense together and they don't take away from the emotion or the energy of the video, it's a good cut. On the second pass, I cut out my silence. I do J and L cuts so I can bring up the pacing of the video. And then on the third pass, I use the boring detector and the close-up tool in the cut page in DaVinci Resolve to do any punch-ins that I want. And the reason why I do it this way is pretty simple. My theory is that if I can keep the video rolling with the right amount of energy and the right amount of emotion without having to put the B-roll in, then when I get to my B-roll segment, all I'm gonna be doing is enhancing the video even more. If I'm relying on B-roll, if I'm relying on titles or effects to make the video good, then I didn't make a good video. And speaking of B-roll, that's the next step in the editing process. I go through and I set my markers where I want my B-roll and then I bring my B-roll in, I trim it to length, I make sure that it's not dragging on too long or cut too short and 
we're good to go. And then after that, I move on to my text and I put in any titles that I'm gonna need. And then I do any visual effects work that doesn't require the fusion page. So anything that's like drag and drop, I'll put that in there as well. And then once all the video elements are in there, I add my sound effects, my Foley and my diegetic sound. I don't do any music until every single section of the video is complete. Now, the only time this workflow is different is when I am doing a tutorial with the screen recording. In those cases, I bring in my A-roll and my screen recording together, sync it up in post, and then start cutting. I'm basically cutting the A-roll and the B-roll at the same time, and then removing the screen recording clips that don't need to be there so you can actually see my wonderful pretty face. And now that our timeline is assembled, it's time to move on to color, effects, and audio. Now these things have a tendency to be taxing on your computer, so I think now's a good time to talk about today's sponsor, Puget Systems. Because honestly, I don't think I could do half the stuff that I do without them. Puget Systems builds custom PCs for video editors, VFX artists, engineers, gamers, basically anybody who is reliant on their PC to do exactly what they need it to do when they need it to do it. The process is simple. Just hop on a call with them, explain to them your workflow, the types of projects you work on, the types of projects you want to work on, and they'll get to work designing a system that is tailor-made for exactly what you do. They even have a killer blog with information like what software works best with what GPU. So you can actually go into your consultation as an educated consumer, which is really, really cool. I love my Puget build. Like I said, I don't think I could do half the stuff that I do without it. So they'll be linked below if you wanna check them out. I highly suggest you do see what they could do to help you improve your workflow. Thanks so much to Puget for sponsoring this video. Now, where were we? Color, let's do color. Now I'm not gonna dive too deep into color grading in this video because I've got a whole playlist with a whole bunch of color grading tips. So I'll have that linked in the description, but I do have some tips. So let's go over some of those. First of all, if your software has the ability to save some sort of color grading preset like DaVinci Resolve's power grades, then I highly suggest you take advantage of that ability because it will save you hours, especially if you're using footage like I am, it's the same location, kind of every single video. Next, if your software allows you to just color grade the master file, even after you've cut up your timeline, then make sure you do that. Again, it'll save you hours. I use DaVinci Resolve's master timeline for that in almost every single video. And then my last tip, if you're doing VFX work, don't color grade your footage yet. Just do your color correction and then grade your footage after the effect has already been applied because that way it'll help you blend in your VFX with the original shot. Okay, timeline's assembled. Color grading is done. Let's move on to VFX. This is honestly a step that I kind of skip half the time because let's be honest, I'm not the greatest with fusion, but I am getting better. So again, I'm not going to go too deep into this. Do your VFX work. Once you've got your composite, go back to color grading and color grade your composited shots and then you're done. Let's talk about audio. Again, I've got a very specific workflow for audio and it's probably overkill for YouTube, but you know, whatever. I love audio, so this is what I do. First thing that I do is I get my basic dialogue levels. This is where I go clip by clip and make sure that the levels are basically the same, make sure nothing's too much quieter than the other thing and you get the idea. And then once I'm done with one set of tracks, for example, the tracks of me sitting in the studio talking to this microphone, then what I do is I send those tracks to a bus and then I bounce that mix to a new track. And then I'll go ahead and do the same thing for the next set of dialogue tracks and the next set of dialogue tracks and the next set of dialogue tracks. You get the idea all the way down until all my dialogue tracks are done. But for YouTube, it's usually just me here in the studio. Sometimes it's me outside with my camera. So at most, I typically only have four dialogue tracks that I'm working with, which means two buses. And at the end, I'll have two tracks with all my dialogue. From there, I move on to get the basic levels for my sound effects, my Foley, my diegetic sound, all of that stuff. And I'll go clip by clip, make sure nothing's too overpowering, make sure everything sounds good together. And then again, once that's done, I send all of that stuff to a bus and bounce that mix to yet another new track. And then I'll do the same thing with my music. Make sure the levels are good, make sure everything is cut where it needs to cut, and then bounce it to a bus, send it to a new track. So when all is said and done, I will have a dialogue track for each person in each location, and then I will have a track for all of my sound effects and Foley and diegetic sound, and then one track 
for my music. And this is the reason why I do this. I, when I actually get to mixing everything together, I want to have as few tracks to work with as possible. So by bouncing mixes to new tracks, by the end, I will only end up having one dialogue track, one sound effects track, one music track, and then I'm just working with three tracks that I have to mix together. It's great. But once everything is bounced to the new tracks, I will take those new audio clips that I just created and send them over to Isotope's RX8 editor for dialogue cleanup. Now, most NLEs have some form of dialogue cleanup tool. You got noise removal, reverb removal, whatever it is. Although DaVinci Resolve does not have a built-in reverb removal tool, which is just ridiculous. So I do all of my audio cleanup in Isotope's RX8 editor, and it's great. I also use Isotope's Nectar 3 plugin to do all of the EQ and compression and DSing work. And so I'll do that while I'm in the editor, and then I'll bounce it back to DaVinci Resolve once it's all said and done. After everything has bounced back and forth from RX-8 back to DaVinci Resolve, I will go through and I will mix every single one of my remaining audio tracks so everything sounds good together. And then I'll throw Isotope's Ozone 9 plugin into the master bus so I can do an EQ and a compression on the entire final mix and normalize it for YouTube. And after that, it's time to export. Now, lately I've been uploading to YouTube directly from DaVinci Resolve because they have this whole using markers to create chapters and it's just great. I love it. But if you don't want to do that, I did a whole video on the best export settings for YouTube. You can check that out right here. Thanks for watching.